because we are called to be witnesses. And we, we're not enthusiastic about his word. Folks are saying, why would I want to be a Christian if that's how you're going to be? I'm more excited going, going out and doing those secular things instead of worshiping God. So we as Christians must, start, must begin to implement what God tells us. Being enthusiastic, even though we're in the valley of the shadow, even though we're in the midst of the storm, even though we, we're in our homes. Even though we, we, at times we, we don't feel like doing anything, we don't want to go anywhere, but God wants us to be enthusiastic. To be depressed is also a feeling like that feeling of hopelessness, gloominess, dejected, downhearted in your life, but it's more than just that. According to the Diagnostic uh, Statistical Manual, which we call the DMS-5, and then a little uh, about me, not only am I a pastor, but I'm also a, a certified alcohol and drug counselor. And, and I'm in private practice that I have. And, and my specialty is anger management, domestic violence, and parenting. And, and, and so I deal with a lot of this. Uh, when we use this, use this particular instrument as a professional, we use it to determine where you are in, in, in your emotional stability, where you are and how you're feeling. And so we experience five, when we experience five or more of the following symptoms during the same two week period, and the symptom must include the first two on this list. Depressed mode must, must, mode, must be most of the day or nearly all day. If you're feeling depressed, it's usually most of the day or nearly all day. It's marked by loss of interest or pleasure. We just don't want to do anything. We just want to be that, that, that proverbial couch potato. We, 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 we experience significant weight loss when, when no dieting or weight gain or decrease or increase in appetite nearly every day. In other words, we experience weight loss even though we're eating we experience weight loss we observe slowing down of thought and reduction of physical movement we experience fatigue and we experience loss of energy nearly every day again we just don't want to do anything we just want to uh, 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 just sit and just be like a zombie we, do, we, we experience a diminished ability to think. Now, this is a big one. We experience the inability to think or concentrate or unable to make decisions nearly every day. See, this. so what's the common word here? Consistency in, in what's going on in us. We have recurrent thoughts of death recurrent suicidal idea ideations without a specific plan or a suicide attempt or a specific plan for committing suicide. We just think it, hmm, why am I here? Why am I existing? I have no goals. Maybe I may be better off not here. I didn't make a plan, but I thought it. These are signs of depression. And one of the reasons why we feel is because we're in a fallen world. We're in a world full of sin. We're in a world full of moral decay. And let's make it personal, if the truth be told, preacher, uh, maybe we're going through some stuff at home that no one wants to talk about. So as, COVID, as the COVID-19 pandemic has extended into uh, uh, months, uh, even here a year, but here we go again. Here we go again with this new variant. The, the numbers are up. Here in LA County where I am, the numbers have increased by 
We are now mandated to wear masks again in restaurants, in open settings. So wait a minute, I'm doing this all over again? Wow. I made it the last time, but am I going to be able to make it this time? You see, COVID has affected us, and it's because us become discouraged. We wonder, am I going to lose my home? Am I going to lose my job? I can't go to work. Am I going to be feel? Am I going to uh, uh, be able to feed my family? But we as Christians may even take this a little, a little deeper. Is this the signs of the end times? So now we begin to think about our own spiritual uh, mortality. We begin to think about where I am in my relationship with Jesus Christ. And although that may be a good thing, because we ought to be every day measuring ourselves to Jesus and, 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 and understanding where we are, where I am in my relationship with Jesus. Because remember, the Bible tells us there'll be no more sin in heaven. And we know that worry comes from what? The devil. We, we know that worrying is a sin. The Bible tells us that he doesn't give us the what? The spirit of what? Fear. But he gives us a sound mind. And we talk about sound mind, the ability to make the right decision in the midst of the storm, as I mentioned. Well, I'm not feeling good today, so therefore I want to get up out of my house and go out and get some sunshine. I'm going to walk to the park. I'm going to go talk to someone. See, COVID, this pandemic has had major effect on our lives. Many of us are facing challenges that could be stressful, overwhelming, and cause strong emotions in adults. And let's not forget about our children. Public health has taken actions such as what? Social distancing. These are necessary to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in this new variant. But that can cause us to be what? Isolated, lonely, Isolated, lonely, I'm sorry, I got my page mixed up. Lonely, increased stress, anxiety. We say things like, uh, as we say things like, I feel like the walls are caving in. In, in, in this pandemic, uh, uh, like I said, a part of the end times. But, the, but that's another question, that's another topic that, the pastor will talk about another day, amen? But there are so many questions. But let's learn some things. Let's learn how to cope with stress in a healthy way to make you, to make me, to make the people we care about and those around us be more resilient. Hebrews 10.25 tells us, not giving up meeting together, as one, as, as some are in the habit of doing. When we go through things, we, 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 we isolate ourselves. But the Bible suddenly said, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day coming. What day is that coming? Jesus Christ coming through the clouds of glory. We ought to be encouraging one another. It's going to be all right. I'm praying for you. I just called to see how you were doing. I call Pastor Davis. We, we talk at least three times a week to encourage one another, to make sure that he made it through the night. And that makes me feel better. That, that makes him feel better. That's what we ought to be doing as fellow Christians with one another. But however many people, uh, discouragement has transformed into depression. Research has shown that the number of people requesting therapy for depression has increased notably during this pandemic. In 2016, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration called SAMHSA determined that 44.7 million adults in the United States 
suffer from some form of mental illness. That's nearly one in five adults. Only 19.2 million receive treatment. Mental illness has their has their seat, uh, mental illness. Many many mental illnesses have their seat in depression and anxiety. And because of that, we want to educate you. I want to help you to understand depression, anxiety, and what we can be what can be done about it. So, so let's look at what the Bible says. In the Bible, numerous people were depressed. Job was depressed for the whole for the whole book of Job after everything, after everything had been taken away from him. He experienced depression. Jeremiah was so depressed uh, for people of for the people of Israel, he wrote Lamentations. After being beaten publicly, Jeremiah was so discouraged that in Jeremiah 20, 14, he says, Cursed be the day I was born. May the day my mother bore me not be blessed. These are just a few individuals that suffer from depression. So I'm saying here, you are not alone. You are not alone. And coping with this uh, uh, depression, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plan to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in the future. That gives me excitement. That ought to give you excitement. Then he tells us in 1 Peter 5, 7 to do what? Cast all of your cares upon him, for he cares for you. You see, we underestimate the love and care that Jesus has for us. The love and care that the Father has for us. He's saying, cast all of your cares upon him. Whatever you're going through, he wants to hear from you. Healthy ways to, uh, 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 to, to deal with stress. Healthy ways to uh, deal with our depression. Helping the ways to decrease the anxiety that we go through within this pandemic. First, take breaks from watching and reading and listening to news stories, including those on social social media. It is good to be informed, but hearing but but hearing about pandemics constantly can be upsetting. Consider limiting news suggests a couple of times a day, or disconnecting from your phone, TV computer screen for a while. I, in my opinion, watch the news in the morning and forget about the rest of the day. Because Hebrews 12.1 says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles us. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us hear, and this is the important part. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning his chains, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endures such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Amen so that you will not grow weary and not lose heart. Keep your eyes, instead of being fixed on the news, open the word of God. Instead of your eyes being fixed on the news, read what Jesus has to say to encourage you. Number two, take care of your body and try to eat healthy, eat a well-balanced meal. In 1 Corinthians 10.31, we are told to do whatever we do to the glory of what? Of who? To the glory of God. If you choose not to follow a healthy lifestyle, to not eat in a healthy manner, to not participate, to not practice self-control, to not exercise, and do not care about your body, you are choosing not to honor God. See, everything is a choice. We could choose to sit on the table on the couch in our misery or get up and go out and get some sunshine and talk to someone. We could choose to watch TV instead of 
uh, reading the word of God to be encouraged. So we need to take care of our bodies, eat healthy. Number three, take deep breaths, stretch, and meditate. Philippians 4, 8 tells us, finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, of good report, if there is any virtue, if, there, if there's anything praiseworthy, amen, praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And after you finish meditating, get a nice sleep in. Nothing like sleep. Number four, we ought to avoid tobacco and alcohol and substances. Now I know we're Christians, <laughs> but the truth be told, we experience these things as Christians. First Peter 5 8 tells us be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a what? Like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can what? Devour. In other words, the devil's trying to catch you unaware. But he wants you to be alert, be vigilant. And you can't be a, alert and vigilant when we're putting things in our bodies or focus on things uh, that, that are not of God. Continue with the routine uh, of preventive um, uh, uh, measures. And, 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 and I suggest, and I recommend, it's just my recommendation, that we get vaccinated. That we get vaccinated. Continue with our health screenings as recommended by your health provider. Make time to unwind. Try to do some other activities you enjoy. Connect with others. Talk with people external that you trust that are concerned about you. Again, the pastor and I talk almost every day because I'm concerned about him. He's concerned about me. I'm concerned about his family. He's concerned about my family. So we talk to encourage one another. Connect with the community. Connect with faith-based organizations. I hear you guys have a powerful faith-based uh, faith -based, based, uh, 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 program going. We know that social distancing, at least in California, is still something uh, of, of importance. But it doesn't mean that we have to stay in our homes. Go, feed that, go see that family member that you've not seen in a while. And then thirdly is helping others cope. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself can better equip you to take care of others. During this time, it's especially important to stay connected with our family and with our friends. Helping others cope through, through, through uh, phone calls and video chats. You see, another important issue thing is prayer. Asking God to come in and intervene, surrender yourself. And not just that, but to act on it. Claim by the awareness of the presence of God so you can respond with clarity and direction so you can hear God's voice. These things are extremely important. These things are extremely important for our mental health. And I hope that you all were able to understand and receive the message. I thank the pastor for allowing me to come on this early Sabbath morning. Have a blessed Sabbath. May God continue to bless you and keep you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor, for coming on and just sharing those nuggets with us.
um, as we coming out of this COVID-19 and still going through um, this pandemic. Thank you for sharing those nuggets with us um, this morning to encourage us, to let us know that depression is real. Amen. It's real. It's that we, real. That we all... It's not final. It's real and it's not fine. Amen. Amen. My Amen. pleasure. Have a happy Sabbath, everybody. Have a blessed day. Amen. Thank right you. Now, right At now. this time, Brother Davis, I'm going to ask if you on with us. I want you to, I want to share the video. I want to share a video with the, the church this morning um, with our virtual revival that we got starting on Sunday at 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. this coming Sunday. Um, it's Brother Davis, if you on with us at this time, I'm going to ask if you would please play that video for us at this time. I just want the uh, <clears throat> Sabbath, there we go. We got it coming. All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Davis, for sharing that. You probably didn't see the sound, but we will run this video again at 11 o'clock hour. Um, church, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted you to see the dates, the, the events that we got coming. Um, I know that's going to be a blessing. God is going to move in a mighty way. Um, our virtual um, South Atlantic revival will start this Sunday. Um, at 7 p.m. And again, church, I'm encouraging you um, to, to be in the virtual space with us. You can go to the South Atlantic website nightly um, to, to, to be able to be um, with us um, from night to night. We'll be off on Tuesday and Thursday. Remember that Tuesday and Thursday, we're off. And so I just want to encourage you to invite someone, share this news, right? Um, 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 shop this around the city. Let people know you can come and watch this. I'm almost home. I truly believe God is going to use Dr. Snell in a special way. And so with that being said, church, you will hear the video again at our 11 o'clock hour. I would not be I'm with you at the 11 o'clock hour, um, and we will have our extended Sabbath school at 11 a.m. So please, if possible, if you don't feel like sitting on your couch and streaming in by the way of Zoom or enjoying yourself by YouTube or our Facebook page, I encourage you to get up, get dressed, go down to the church um, about 11 o'clock. Um, we're going to have going to be a good time at church today. Our praise team um, will be with us, um, and Elder Brian will be teaching our lesson. And so I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what God is going to do through this virtual space of revival. So church, with that being said, hope, to, hope that you will tune back in, whether you're going to sit at home or you will go to the church at 11 a.m. for our divine service. With that being said, let's pray at this time. Father in heaven, we thank you for speaking to our hearts this morning, letting us know that depression is real. And we all, in some form or fashion, experience it on, on a daily basis. But we thank you for your son, Jesus, this morning, who have given us the strength and the victory. And so, God, I ask that you will bless the church now. I ask that you will forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, church, I encourage you to tune back in at 11 a.m. Or I encourage you to get up, get dressed, and go down to the church house. Uh, my guidelines are in place. You have to have wear a mask. You have to stay spread it out. We're taking every every step to make sure um, that you remain safe as you come back to the building. With that being said, may God bless you. May God keep you till we meet again. God bless all.
Son Christ Jesus. This morning we lift up those who have lost a loved one in death. We lift up the Corbett family. We lift up those who will be going to the doctor or just left the doctor and receive a diagnosis that they don't understand. We lift them up today. We lift up the leader of this church, dear Father. And all that's gathered here today come from different walks of life, different addresses. We come collectively, but we know that you look down on us and you deal with us individually. 
So bless us collectively. Yes, dear God, hear our cry individually. We're going to thank you. We're going to claim that you're already working things out for us. We give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, can you put your hands together this morning? Come on. Come on and bless the Lord in me. Bless the Lord in me. Come on and bless the Lord in me. Bless the Lord in me. Come on, help me say it this morning. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Yeah. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. We're singing hallelujah. Oh, oh. hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands with me. Come on, clap. Clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Now we're singing hallelujah. What's the highest praise? Hallelujah. We're singing hallelujah. What's the highest praise? Hallelujah. Right here. Come on and dance before the Lord. Dance before the Lord. Come on and dance before the Lord. Yeah. Dance before the Lord. What is the highest praise? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. What's the highest praise? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now we're singing. Hallelujah. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. What's the highest praise? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody come to worship our God today? Come on, can you lift your hands and worship him right where you are? We serve a mighty God. We serve an awesome God. And we know there's none like our God. Can anybody testify this morning that we serve a great and mighty God? That he's a healer? That he's a deliverer? That he's a present help in a time of trouble? And there's none like our God. Come on, this is from him right where you are. Hallelujah. The song it declares this morning, it says, Now there is none like you. Mm -hmm. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search through all eternally, Lord, and find there is none like you. If you know it, help us sing this morning. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. Has anybody ever had to search? I can search through all eternally, Lord, and find 
There is none like you. Oh, yeah, sing. Now there is none like you. Oh, no one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search. I can search through all eternity, Lord, and find there is none, there is none, there is none, there is none, there is none. Like you. Since there's none like them this morning, we want to tell them this. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Anybody love them this morning? Oh, I love you, Jesus. Yeah. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, one time, y'all. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Anybody come to worship this morning? I worship and adore on, say, you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you that I love. Lord, I love Lord. you more than anything. Come on, can you just reach way down this morning and tell them, say, I love you, Jesus. I, I love you, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, let's worship. I worship. I worship and adore just wanna you. Tell just you. want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, we're going to do it one more time this morning. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than Anything. Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, if you love them this morning, won't you lift your hands and tell them, say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, yes. Lord, I love you more than anything oh yes we love you As we continue to open church up, we're still trying to put things in place. Amen. So we're doing things different. We're doing things different. Uh, our offering. We encourage you to go online at Venice Giving. Also at the present time, not the present time, but we just added the cash app. You can go out, uh, do by way of cash app. Uh, also, think on Tuesday, uh, at 11.30 to 1.30, something like that. You can stop by and drop off your tithe and offering. You can send it by way of the snail. The U.S. Mail. Amen. Okay? Uh, you can do it that way. 
But if you have, have an offering today, you desire to give it, someone will be standing at the door when you go out, just drop it in the offering plate. So those are the ways that we are doing our offering, all right? So we ask that you work with us. Today, we're having live Sabbath school, but there's a catch to the live Sabbath school. Won't be that much participation. Amen. All right. We are still trying to put this together. Uh, prayer meeting will still be why be via uh, Zoom as well as Sabbath school. But we switched today, and we had a testimony time earlier this morning online. And before service over today, we will have a live testimony here. So uh, my dear sister who want to make a statement, we will inform you at the present at the time when we will do that. Amen. You work with me on that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let us pray our Heavenly Father come by way of the Holy Spirit. Again, I ask that you sit with us. Teach us. Teach us this lesson that we so much need. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, today we want to talk to you about the root of restlessness. The roots. Why am I so restless? Why am I so restless? It's a good question, Dante. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm restless. You know, I got to run here and I got to run there, and there's trouble in the family, and there's oh, there's just so much going on. Restless. Well, where's the root? Because our lesson for this quarter is rest in Jesus. Rest in Jesus. It's a strange lesson because, listen, the root of restlessness, we will study attitudes that are often hidden from sight and raise their ugly head from time to time. Attitudes. Ah. <laughs> So that's attitude, that's hidden, you know. But every once in a while, it raises head. Attitudes such as pride, selfishness, unhealthy ambition, and hypocrisy too often criticize, no characterize the lives of Christians and tarnish our witness. Attitudes such as pride, selfish, unhealthy ambition, and hypocrisy too often characterize the lives of Christians and tarnish their witness. So let's, let's, let's jump into this lesson just for a few minutes because as we move, as we try to open back, open church up, many churches realize they were staying in church too long to start with. Amen. And, you know, staying long church has nothing to do with salvation. There's a lot of things we do don't have nothing to do with salvation. It's tradition. It feels good. It look good. It doesn't have nothing to do with salvation. So I'm going to try to get through this presentation within a few minutes here. Amen. Well, when we talk about this thing called uh, the roots of restlessness, the first thing, Jesus, of all people, brings some division. What is division? What is division? The action of separating into parts. Of all people, Jesus brings some division. My goodness, that up front make me restless. Huh? I mean, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us brings division. Well, let's see what he says here. It says that in Matthew 10, 34 through 39, 
is that it's really about allegiance and loyalty. Jesus comes in and he says this. Let's go there. He said, a man fool, when a man accepts, that mean? No. That's down by that. When a man accepts Christ, his closest friend often turn out to be his most bitter and relentless enemy. Hmm. I want to read that again. When a man slash woman accept Christ, their closest friend often turn out to be his most bitter and relentless enemy. This is often true. Now, in verse 37 say, love your father or mother. Jesus was saying, hey, if you love your father or mother more than me, you got trouble in your house. We just will say amen. Amen. Huh? See, we're talking, we're going to get into those roots in a minute here, but he's saying here that your commitment need to be to God first. All right? Now, listen, I know that's delicate. <laughs> I'm standing right here with you. Right? I know that's delicate. It's a deep decision to make. Who come first, brother God or my family? Well, let's unpack this. So Jesus said, when you accept me, there are going to come some problems, and you got to decide where you make your allegiance to. You got to decide that. We got to decide that. Let's get into a little bit more here and, and, and get in this thing about selfishness. Selfishness. Listen to what I say. Let's go to Luke 12, 13 through 21. Jesus is up talking and somebody in the audience Jump up and said, hmm? let's get there. 12, Luke 12, 13 through 21. Just give me a few minutes. 13 through 21. Someone from the crowd said to him, Master, order my brother to divide their hands and share it with me. It's out of clear blue sky. You're up talking. He jumps up, hey, master, order my brother to share the inheritance with me. Now, research said he had heard Jesus at another occasion, and he felt that this was the right time to ask him because it appeared that Jesus had some authority. So they were arguing about some inheritance. He said, that's what I want you to do. Make this statement today that my brother need to share this inheritance with me. Now, I think research said also that the oldest son, uh, sibling, got a, a two-thirds of the estate, and then the rest of them got the other part of it. So him and his brother, was he was saying, you need to give me some of this, what you got. Now, research said also that both of them were dealing with some covers. Selfishness. Now we have to admit. Well, let me put it this way. I have to admit that I can be very, very selfish at any given time. Normally, it, it pops up during a crisis. There was one family, there was one family. Uh, the bird. The matriarch of the family, about two o'clock, six o'clock, the grands went there and took everything out the house. Did you catch that? Not the children, but the grands with the hats, the dresses, the pots, the pain, 
selfishness. Hmm? Then give the children time to decide on what they're going to do with those things that were left. Selfishness. We have them. And so Jesus is saying, wait a minute, you, you need to make a decision on where your loyalty lies. Selfishness. We see it every day. Well, you know, that's my check. And one of the biggest problems in a marriage in the home is M-O-N-E-Y. I make my money, I spend it like I want to spend. It's your job to do this. My job is spend my money like I want to spend. Hmm? We all deal with this thing called selfishness. See, we're trying to find one of the root cause of restlessness because we're restless. You know, we go home, you know, this not done, and that's not done. Expecting me to, so I'm upset, I'm restless, you know, because I want to find this quiet place where I can just get that rest that I need. And Christ said, you only can find that in me. That's what he says. Instead, let me read this here. This parable appeared only in the gospel loop and is told in response to an Anonymous question from Moses. Asked about question regarding and had. Jesus responded by rejecting the role of the, uh, the gentleman between this argument between the brothers. Instead, he uh, opts to put his finger on the bigger underlying problem, namely selflessness. He digs deeper to show the root mass under, underneath our individual action. So this morning, I want you to think about something. Think about expression of selfishness in your life. How does selfishness affect our relationship with God? How does selfishness reflect our spouses and family with our church family, with our neighbor, and with colleagues at work? Let's go to first, I mean, Philippians 5, I mean, Philippians 2, Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Let's see what the Bible had to say about that. Philippians 2, verses 5 through 8. This, the writer asks us to think about this, uh, our expression of selfishness, to think about it. To think about it in our life. And then he sends us to Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Let each one of you, let this same attitude and purpose and mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. That's what the Bible says. So the first thing is say that if we, when we think about self we think about how it is embedded in our mind. Hmm? So think about Christ. So let the same mind that Christ have be within us. Now, this is satisfying. We bring selfishness to the church. We bring it to the church. Oh, yes. See, really, the way we act in our home is the way we act at church. We really look at it. If I'm pushing, if I'm mean, if I don't halfway speak, if I'm always wanting something to go my way, I do it at my house. Our communities, it reflects in our home. Hmm? By focusing solely on his own seed ambition, the anonymous rich man of Jesus' parable forgot to take into consideration 
unseen heaven realities, bigger, better, and more are not the foundational principle God came. You know the rich man. Rich man said, well, you know what? Oh, man, I got it going on. What am I going to do with all this stuff I got? Oh, 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 I know what I'll do. I'll build me some more bonds. And I'll put all that stuff in there and I'll lay back and say, hey, Joe, you got it going on. Christ was putting that power out so they, to show that, hey, he didn't think, the rich man didn't think about giving to nobody else. Time will so sell. We say we're going to have a food drive. And I'll go to my house and I'll bring that deep, that old big can of beans to the church that I really want to get rid of all the time and I didn't know how to get rid of it. And I'll say, well, I don't want to have anything. I'm going to give them this old beat up can of beans. But at the same time, God has blessed me I really can go to the supermarket and buy cases of beans, fresh beans, and give to them. Selfishness. So we're restless. Ambition. Let's talk about ambition for a minute here. We seldom discuss with others who is the greatest in our church. Now, when we talk about this, research says that you have to break it down a little bit. We seldom discuss who make the most money, who's most important in the church. We don't say it out loud, but you really think about it. Hmm? And most of the time it comes when nominating committee come around. We'll push people around. We will, we, we, we will say things because we, 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 we just ambitious to get a high position. On our job, we, we set people up so they could fail. And they'll set you up so you can fail. <laughs> huh? Because we, we, this ambition that we have, because we're restless. I want this because if I get this, I can get that Lexus. Nothing wrong with that Lexus. Nothing wrong with that F-150. Nothing wrong with that Cadillac. That pretty Cadillac. All right, you know, I'm just messing with you. Nothing wrong with it. But if I go at it the wrong way, then I'm, I, I, I'm just restless. Well, you know, you know, uh, 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 Bob got one, and oh, man, I like that thing, so I'm going to get one. And, and my thing is, if Bob get a boat, then I'm going to have a boat in my yard. We're restless. This hypocrisy, you know, we always can say that, don't we? You know, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Come on, you, you, you better open this stamp this morning. You know how we give those testimonies. You know, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't do this. I'm not that. Listen to what I say. According to Jesus, we are hypocrites if we don't do what we say when we make religion harder. Well, first, Jesus was telling them, listen, you are a hypocrite if you don't do what you say. First thing, right? Okay? When we make religion harder for others without applying the same standard to ourselves. Hmm? When we want others to applaud our religious fever. Hey, well, you didn't say nothing about me. I came up and pulled 10 weeds out the church yard you didn't say nothing about me. Hmm? You didn't say nothing about me when I gave my testimony last week. But when Brother Tuesday gave his testimony, you did all the praise and stuff. Hmm. When we want others to applaud our religion feed, religious fever, and when we require honor and recognition that belong only to our Heavenly Father. Ah, Christ said we are hypocrites. We are hypocrites. Well, how do we uproot this restlessness? 
John 14, 1 through 6 says it all. John 14, 1 through 6 says it all. How do we uproot this? How, how do we pull up this, 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 this root? John 14, 1 through 6. The Bible says, do not let your heart be troubled. What are you talking about, Christ? Don't be distressed. Don't be agitated. You believe in and inherit to and trust in and rely on God. Believe in and inherit and trust in and rely also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. Homes. Or if, if it were not so, I would not have told you. For I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And when, if I go and make ready a place for you, I will come back and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And to the place where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth, and the life. No one come to the Father except by or uh, through me. Listen to this scene here. Thomas, hanging out with Christ all the time. You know, I always say that, you know, we, 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 we make them Saint, Saint Peter, you know, Saint John, and, and, and Saint Thomas, and, and, and Saint Luke, and all these here, they were dealing with restlessness. And Thomas asked the question, Hey man, now, you know, Thomas is right there with him, you know, but he was doubting. Well, I don't know whether he did that or not. Hmm? And, and now Christ is saying that, you know, I understand you got some, some restless going on. I, I understand you got some issues going in your life, but let me tell you where you can find rest at. Thomas is beginning to ask the question, uh, uh, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way? With Jesus, could it be that I've been with Christ or professed to be with Christ all these years and still don't know the way? Read this here. Overcoming restlessness always begins with Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. When we are hurt, and many of us here today are hurt, tired, Worn out. Many of us are hurt, tired. We are sick and tired. This look like I just can't get no rest. You know, I've been running from Christ. I'm trying to please this. I'm trying to do this. I'm tired. So tired and worn out that I'm sick. I'm also discouraged. Here's what the writers say. He is the life, not just in a life. In fact, he has promised us life and abundance. So let not your heart be troubled. It's an invitation to live and anticipation. When we feel low, he is able to put us on a high plane. When we struggle with the darkness of sin, oh yes, oh yes, we struggle with the darkness of sin. He is the one who not only began, but also will finish a good work. So how do we uproot this thing? Jeremiah said, when we return to Christ, when we return to Christ, he will heal us. There can be no growth or fruitfulness in the life that is centered in sin. When I'm when my life is centered in sin, there ain't no growth in me. There's no growth in me. Because it's all about me. 
How can there be any growth in me? Well, I want to give you the five minute concept. Five minutes. In dealing, and this is with issues within our church. And dealing with issues between church members. <laughs> The church member get upset if you don't even speak. But I come to church because I'm hurting. I got things on my mind. And I forgot to speak to Sister Wednesday. Now she's saying that you didn't speak to me. I think you hate me. And all kind of issues is beginning to come out. But see, we both come here because this is the hospital. We come to get a shot. I'm hurting, I come, I got issues on my mind. I got this thing going on. And Sister Wins, where am I? I didn't speak to her. That's what the right said. In dealing with issues between church members, maybe in the church or outside of the church, but church members, conversation that has been going on for hours between parties concerned are not on, and not only had their time been wasted, but the servant of God are held to listen to them. So we bring the pastor in. Bring one of the elders in. Don't you listen to my concern. And talk for an hour. But we may even come back another day and talk about it. This is what the writer said. When the hearts of both parties are unsubdued by grace. If pride and selfishness were laid aside, five minutes will remove most difficulties. Five minutes concept. But I go into the conversation with some pride. I go into the conversation with some selfishness. I really, it's, it's all about me. It's the principle of the matter, as we say. And we talk for hours and we get upset with the servant of the Lord, the pastor, the other person, because they didn't go to our side and they didn't hear me in the right way. You took it wrong. It just become a mess. Early writing say it could end in five minutes if we get rid of pride and selfishness. So that's the, those are the roots of our restlessness. Look at the world today. Look at the church today. In and out. You know, we hobble in and we hobble out. Look at the world. Oh, everybody got to hear me. It's all about what I say. Huh? And wait a minute here, wait a minute here. And we are sitting and believing these people. The word of God say, put your trust in him. Huh? Huh? That's why the word of God say. Put your trust in him. We think going to be sovereign. No, nothing wrong. Please do. Please vote. Please vote. Please be concerned about the environment. Please do those things. Don't let it separate you and I from Christ. One of the great preachers said that and if you go outside, you'll see some cars. You know, all that going to be burned up. We can talk about our bank account. All that will be destroyed. 
So may God bless you. I hope I'll share with you a few points here. It's a little different today. It's a little different. You'll be seen. We'll be doing things different here, trying to trying to go to church back because really our job is really outside the street. That's where the work is at. And maybe God permitted this pandemic to come because his people not in the street witnessing and relieving some of the suffering and the misery that's going on. At this time, my dear sister, if you will stand and uh, share with us your testimony, Sister Sandy, thank you had a testimony you want to share with us. Uh, just give us a few minutes here to listen to her testimony. To God be the glory of great things he's done. Sister Sandy is part of uh, uh, Brother Corbett with the home that I shared with you that the roof caved in. Uh, give God the praise that she's walking down the aisle. Amen? Give God the praise that she's walking down the aisle because uh, could have been another way. <clears throat> First of all, I want to say happy, happy Sabbath to everyone that's here today. Woo. I want to thank God for letting me be here in the house today. Because I couldn't, because I, without the Lord, I wouldn't been here. We had a disaster at our home last Friday. But the Lord made a way. And he seen and he and he had his angels surrounding me because I was in the house when everything happened. And I just want to thank them. I just want to thank them because I couldn't been, I wouldn't been I, I'm just so poor, so y'all gotta kind of excuse me. But um I just want to thank him. I just want to thank him. you know. The guys that was on the roof, I know God is good. He always been good to me, and I know he's been good to you guys. But he was really good to me because the guys that fixed the roof, that was on top of the roof, they normally come in the mornings. Because, you know, we've been having this hot weather, so they normally come in the mornings. Early in the morning, they'll come. And they'll leave at 12 o'clock and come back around 6 when it's getting a little cooler. But this time, they didn't go. They normally go out for lunch. This time, they didn't go out for lunch. They said they was going to be there and work it through, try to work it through. And I'm in the, I was in the restroom. And one of the guys came through the came rushing to the door, to the door. And he said, Sandra, get out of here. You got to go, the roof is collapsing. And it wasn't nothing but the Lord that sent his angels that protected me because Corbett wasn't there. He, went, he was at the store somewhere. But any other time, at 12 o'clock, the guys will be gone at 12 o'clock. But they wasn't gone. They said they was going to stay and work it through. So I know the Lord had the angels and watching over top of me. Because if them guys wasn't there, and I was just there in the house myself, but it came down on me. But the Lord made a way that he had someone to come in the house to let me know, to tell me to get up out of there. So I just, I just... It's just so much that I can say, and I'm a little shooken up, but I know the Lord will make a way. He always have, and he will continue, because he said he would never leave us or forsaken us. And I've always been a true believer when it comes down to my, our Father, always. I've been a seven-day Adventist all my life, from the age of 14. I became a seven day uh, became a seven day Adventist back home in Baltimore, Maryland, and I always believed in the Lord, and I know He'll make a, make a way, because He said He will never leave us or forsaken us. 
And I just want to say thank everybody for being supportive to us. And thank you, Brian, and everyone else. I just needed to say something. I'm, I'm kind of nervous because I, I never said nothing in front of a bunch of a crowd, you know. So y'all got to kind of excuse me with that. But God is good. He's good. And I just want to say, Lord, I just want to thank you. 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 I want to thank you for being so good to me. So good to me. Thank you.